All right, guys, how's it going? So now we're almost in August, and we've actually had quite a few releases from the new architectures. It all, of course, started with NVIDIA's Tesla P100, the massive 600 square millimeter GPU, all of which are basically going to the high performance computing sectors. It's not really a gaming GPU. We did, of course, have to wait another month on the NVIDIA GTX 1080, followed quickly by the 1070. AMD launched Polaris and Nvidia followed soon after with the GTX 1060. So we've got quite a lot of cards now. AMD will be releasing the 470 and 460 very soon. But what was probably the biggest news of the week is that Nvidia will once again be launching a new Titan, confusingly named the Titan X, which according to them will be the ultimate, period. I'll be very surprised if this is the ultimate, period, because I'm pretty certain that Nvidia has an even faster card ready to launch at the end of the year or the beginning of 2017. And why do I believe this? Well, let's just take a look. Right, so the new Nvidia Titan X introduced today based on their new Pascal GPU architecture is the biggest GPU ever built. That doesn't really make sense, but I guess they're no longer calling P100 a GPU. No, they are. I thought this was the biggest GPU ever built, Nvidia. I'm pretty sure it is. This one, however, should not be that big. But anyway, that's not important. The important thing is, of course, the record-breaking 3584 CUDA cores. And they did say that the GTX 1080 delivers an irresponsible amount of performance. It was a bit reckless, but this is even more reckless. Okay. Right, so forget the words, thank you. Here are the numbers. 11 teraflops of FP32. What was the 1080? 8.2, was it? 8.2, and then a bit for the boost up to 8.9, something like that. So you're looking at a reasonable increase. I think Anantech said around about 24% higher teraflops. Yeah, there we go, 24% higher than the GTX 1080. Now the first giveaway that there's an even faster GPU out there is that this does have 3,584 CUDA cores. And we already know that the GTX 1080 has 2,560. So this number is only 40% higher, which doesn't really make sense. It should be 50% higher. And in order for that to be true, it should have 3,840 CUDA cores. What this effectively means is the new Titan X is a cut down GPU. 1.53 gigahertz, a little bit slower than the 1080. However, this is probably gonna hit two gigahertz, the same as the other cards. And Nvidia claims up to 60% faster performance than the previous Titan X. And maybe slightly disappointingly, it's got the 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X. It's not really a surprise. We are effectively looking at 50% more than the GTX 1080, which means a 384-bit memory bus compared to 256 bits. And that's why you've got 50% higher memory bandwidth, 480 gigabytes per second compared to 320 on the GTX 1080. Right, so you pretty much know exactly what the GPU is now. And simply put, NVIDIA is doing the exact same thing that they did with the Kepler generation and the original Titan. Now in all honesty, the original Titan is something of a forgotten card. It launched over three years ago at the price of $1,000, which back then people thought was absolutely crazy. And we can see here from the Anantech review that it also had a rather curious number of stream processors. Because once again, the original Titan was a cut down version of GK110, which was the largest of the Kepler family GPUs. Similar kind of chip, you've got the 384 bit memory bus and a 250 watts TDP, which the new Titan X also has. Now back then we weren't really sure, but some people said there must be an even faster GPU. But what actually happened was, if we go over to Wikipedia, we can see the original Titan launched on the 21st of February 2013. But three months later, in May the 23rd, Nvidia also launched the GTX 780. Now we can see the number of cores here, 2688. If we now check what the GTX 780 was, we can see that it had 2304 CUDA cores, also based on the same GK110 GPU. It also had slightly faster clock speeds and the same memory bandwidth. Once again, over at Anantech, we can see the GTX 780 launched at $650. So this was very much the gamer version of the GTX Titan. It only had half the VRAM, but it was a lot cheaper. And as you can see here, performance was very close to the original Titan. Simply put, this is exactly what Nvidia will do again. The new Titan X launches $1,200. One or two months later, you're gonna get the 1080 Ti, which just like the 780, will be an even more cut down version of the Titan X. 
it will also likely have slightly faster clock speeds and performance will be very similar. The biggest difference will be it won't cost $1200. On the other hand, it's likely going to cost $900. You guys with the 980 Ti's? Well, your upgrade to the 1080 Ti is going to cost at least $800 and probably $900. That's the cheapest you're going to see GP102 at least for a very long time. But that's a slower card. I did actually say it'll be a faster card. And if you remember your graphics card history, towards the end of 2013, in November, Nvidia launched the GTX 780 Ti, which was the full GK110 with 2880 CUDA cores. So this was it. This was the full GK110, and Nvidia also has the capability of releasing a full GP102 at some later point. One of the main reasons that this card saw the light of day is that AMD finally released their Hawaii architecture, the R9 290X and the R9 290, which were surprisingly fast, a bit faster than what people were expecting and actually a bit faster than what AMD expected as well. So the 290X came out and beat the original Titan, which meant that Nvidia had to release the GTX 780 Ti in order to retake the crown. These full GPUs are much harder to manufacture, this is why the new Titan X doesn't have the full amount, yeah? Nvidia would rather sell you this, rather than be forced to sell the full 3840 core version. In all honesty, whether or not we do see this full version comes down to just how competitive AMD is with Vega. If we just take a look at the history, we can see the GTX 580 and the GTX 680. There was a gap there of around 33%. The 680 was 33% faster. And the 780 Ti was 37% faster than the GTX 680. But the Titan and the 780, those were much closer. The 780 here was only 18% faster than the GTX 680. That might actually end up being the case for the 1080 Ti. It may end up only being around 18-20% to faster than the current 1080. And what happened after the 780 Ti was launched, of course, was Nvidia brought out their Maxwell architecture. And all this Kepler stuff really did not age well. I've gone over that before, I'm not going to do it again, but you know what I think about it. For me, what it comes down to is this. There are two types of people who will buy the Titan X, and only one of them is the smart way to do it. A couple of months ago, when the GTX 1080 was released, I said this is a mid-range GPU at high-end prices. And of course, I get a bunch of stick for suggesting that. Yet here we are, two months later, and your high-end price GTX 1080 is now indeed mid-range. The type of people who are going to buy this Titan X, one of them is going to sell that GTX 1080 second-hand on the used market and then use the money to buy this card. And they will just keep on doing that. The second type of person who buys this Titan X probably buys it in the belief that a $1200 graphics card is going to be the fastest graphics card available for many years to come. Sadly, it is just not the case. Nvidia has a faster card that they will release if AMD is anywhere close. So just keep that in mind. I just wonder at which point, with these prices going up all the time, Nvidia offering cut down cards 25-30% faster than the GTX 1080, 50% price on top. At which point do you reach your limit when you say no more? There was actually a very interesting comment on Anantech, believe it or not, from a guy here who's got two 980 Ti SLI. So we're certainly not talking about a guy without money. And he wrote a very interesting post. And what he said was, at what price would you decide not to buy a new Nvidia GPU? I see you mentioned that you were buying only one Titan X instead of two. And if the Titan X was $1,500, would you buy it? If yes, then what about $2,000? $3,000? He wants to know what Nvidia's customers will let them get away with. And later on, according to this guy, 1.5k is probably his absolute limit. Well, Nvidia's going to make him hit that limit pretty soon. It's an awful lot of money for a graphics card. But at which point do you hit your limit? I know a bunch of you guys have got 980 Ti's. $600 is an awful lot of money for a graphics card. And that's probably what you paid around that level for that card. $600 is sort of at the range for me where I say, that's a lot for a graphics card. But I can imagine paying that for one. If I kind of lost my head a little bit one day, I could pay $600 for a graphics card. But the 1080 Ti, based on this new Titan X, is gonna cost eight or $900 for maybe 50% faster. I mean, 50% is a pretty good upgrade, yeah? But remember we're talking reference 980 Ti's? We've seen what happens when both are overclocked. The 980 Ti still hangs in there. Overall, you might be looking at 30 to 40% faster for eight or $900. I just can't get my head around that. I understand these guys, yeah? 
who have got 1080s. This guy's got SLI 1080s. So he's going to sell those and he's going to buy the Titan X. Constantly buy the newest card, sell the old one second hand, get as much money as you can for them. It's an awful lot of money. You don't feel like you're spending $1,200, but in actual fact, you're spending more. For me, this is the only smart way to do it though, because we've seen how the longevity just isn't there in the NVIDIA graphics card market. So yeah, for me, it's a very difficult one. We're now basically in an age where graphics cards are consumables, especially the high-end NVIDIA stuff. If you want one of these, make sure you get a good price for your older card as well. If you're buying to Future Proof, this is not the card to get. You need to buy Volta early on when it's a brand new architecture. That's when you want to buy a new NVIDIA graphics card. Hopefully that should last a little bit longer, but we're still talking two years maximum. In terms of NVIDIA, I am just massively impressed by what they have done so far on 16 nanometers. That's four different GPUs within the space of maybe three months. To be fair, the stock levels are a bit of a joke, but a lot of that is to do with the fact that they just can't get enough wafers to manufacture them, yeah? NVIDIA's done everything they had to do. They have got every single card out in good time with great performance and prices which make me shudder for the future of gaming. In the past, I may have said, wait and see what AMD does with Vega. I'm not even gonna say that this time. For you guys with like 980 Ti's, I have got no idea what the best thing for you to do is. These guys are ditching their 1080s to buy the Titan X's. Maybe if you pick up a used 1080, then that could be a reasonable upgrade at a sort of decent price. But I really do have to imagine that the vast majority of you, you guys with the 980 Ti's, I've got to imagine that the vast majority of you will not be spending eight to nine hundred dollars on the 1080 Ti and certainly not 1200 on the new Titan X. The last thing I want to say about this name, this Titan X, this is just horrible stuff by Nvidia. And a lot of people buying this will end up buying the old Titan X, believing it's a new one. I know that I give Nvidia a lot of stick, but if I were Nvidia, I would do all this stuff as well. They are a company and they are doing everything they can to get their money out of you. And they are doing a brilliant job of it. I just wish I had a little bit more faith in AMD and in Vega and maybe these prices can be kept in check. But this is simply a lack of competition. And sadly, we are just as much to blame. Nvidia is blameless in all this. They're doing exactly what they should do as a company. It's us that keep on buying it and AMD just really needs to get their finger out. I just don't know where this all ends. $1,500, $2,000, $3,000. What is your limit, guys? If you're the type of guy that would buy a Titan X, I would love to know what your limit is. So let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your expectations of buying a $1,200 graphics card are. Do you expect this to last two years? I mean, you guys must have a lot of money, yeah? Only guys with a lot of money buy $1,200 graphics cards. And I would be really interested in knowing what your expectation level, what kind of performance, what kind of longevity do you expect from the new Titan X? I'll catch you later, guys.